I'm standing on top of, perhaps, one of the greatest discoveries of ancient history since the Renaissance. Priceless artifacts that could tell us more about ancient Greece and ancient Rome than anywhere else in the world. Now, this is just a small public park outside Naples. Uh, it's closed now because it's Sunday, but what's inside the park doesn't really matter. What matters is that I'm standing on top of about 25 meters of mud, which came from Mount Vesuvius, which is a volcano that erupted nearly 2,000 years ago, swept through this area, destroying the entire region, including the town of Herculaneum. And I've been exploring Herculaneum all day. I've been seeing incredible frescoes and mosaics and amazingly preserved buildings. But there's one place in Herculaneum which you can't explore. And it's not just because the park is closed. It's because it's under 25 meters of that volcanic mud. You see, in the 1700s, someone was digging a well and discovered a beautiful polychrome circular floor. Soon after, they came across a huge collection of incredibly preserved bronze statues. This quickly garnered the attention of the king, who had them removed and brought to his palace just down the street. He invited diplomats and artists from around the world to come and gawk at these ancient finds, some of the best preserved artifacts from ancient Rome. The king set the diggers to keep digging and digging and digging. Statues, frescoes, and mosaics came to the surface. Soon, there was an entire network of tunnels underground and they realized they had discovered an ancient villa, a huge villa owned by an exceedingly wealthy person. As they dug, they also came across pieces of charcoal, which they sometimes burned to keep warm or just threw away. They had no need for charcoal with such incredible artifacts just around the corner. Until one of them was dropped and in the dying light, they saw a glint that looked like ink. And upon closer inspection, it was ink. It was ancient writing in Greek. And these pieces of charcoal were not charcoal at all. They were ancient scrolls filled with text, surviving directly from the ancient world. In total, over a thousand scrolls were discovered. Today, most of them are kept in a special office in the National Library in Naples. The discovery of these scrolls was so exciting that the ancient villa where all these statues and frescoes and scrolls were found was named after the scrolls. And so it's called the Villa of the Papyri. Why papyri? Because the scrolls are made of papyrus, which is a plant originally grown along the banks of the Nile River in Egypt. Papyrus was the most common writing material in the ancient world amongst the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the Romans. As a plant, of course, it's an organic material, so it slowly degrades, decomposes, and disappears over time. This is why the discovery of the scrolls underneath Herculaneum are so incredible, because they represent the only intact library from the ancient Greco-Roman world. Now, when we talk about ancient Greece or its inhabitants, we do so with a kind of immediacy and directness. Plato said this, Aristotle did that, but we don't really have a direct account from their own hands. We don't have a scroll that we can read that they wrote or any of their friends and family from their own time wrote. We don't have that that we can open and read. Instead, what we have, whether we're talking about the plays of somebody like Sophocles or religious texts like the Bible or even the epics of Homer, what we have 
are copies of copies of copies that have been passed down and preserved through the millennia. Through the process of copying texts over the thousands of years, many of them were mistranslated or otherwise edited. Some of the texts were only valued for certain parts of what was within them, and so whatever else was in those texts has been lost, and today we only have a small fragment. Or even worse, and keeping in mind the huge effort it would have taken to hand copy a text in ancient times, many of them were simply not valuable enough. They were forgotten. They were never copied and so have degraded and disappeared, likely to be lost forever. On the other hand, the Herculaneum scrolls have been delivered directly to us, unedited, unchanged, and without any of the selection bias of that interceding 2,000 years. Ironically, it's the violent cataclysmic eruption of Mount Vesuvius that has preserved some of the only primary source documents to reach us directly from the hands of antiquity. There's just one big problem. Most of the scrolls are almost impossible to read. When Mount Vesuvius erupted, pyroclastic mud spewed into the villa at high temperature and covered the scrolls, suffocating them. In the absence of oxygen, the scrolls didn't burn, but they were blackened and carbonized, which is why they were originally mistaken for charcoal. This process left them extremely fragile. Papyrus is naturally supple and pliable, perfect for rolling up into written scrolls. But to simulate the transformation that took place in the villa of the papyri, I bought some papyrus myself. I rolled it up, put it into an enclosed bowl to simulate the suffocating effects of the mud, and left it in the oven at high heat for a few hours. Once I took the scroll out of the oven and tried to unroll it, the fibers of the papyrus had become hardened and weak. I couldn't unroll more than a couple centimeters at a time without chunks and fragments breaking off. Compared to my papyrus, the Herculaneum papyri were much more damaged and more tightly rolled, not to mention 2,000 years old, and so the ancient scrolls are even more difficult to unroll and read. Since their discovery in the 1750s, many methods have been applied to unroll the scrolls, from slicing them open with a knife to dissolving them in chemicals. The most successful method has been the invention of an unrolling machine by which, in just millimeters per day, the scrolls could be unrolled over the course of several years. But even in the best case scenario, maybe 20 to 30% of a scroll will be readable. In the worst case, well, we've already forever lost a huge amount of text from trying to read the scrolls and in the process, destroying them. Until just recently, it became possible to read from these scrolls without damaging them and in fact, without even opening them. Using a particle accelerator, a few scrolls were scanned, and applying computing technology, it is possible to detect ink from within the scrolls. And in late 2023, using this method, the first word was deciphered. It's the word porfiras, which means purple. And just a few months later, using that same method, 15 columns with hundreds of words were discovered. Using this technology, it could be possible to read way more text than ever before, and that's without even damaging the scrolls. But here's where it gets really interesting. The villa was discovered in the 1700s, and all the finds were brought out from under the 25 meters of mud through this entranceway, which you can see in the modern town of Herculaneum. The finds were put on display at the king's palace, and it seemed there was nothing left to find. With no need to return, 
The villa was essentially lost in the network of underground tunnels used to excavate it. But in the 1990s, a huge trench was dug to reveal part of the villa again. And during this process, they realized that the excavation in the 1700s only explored the top floor of the villa. And there are probably two more floors that have never been explored. Most of the texts that have been recovered from the Herculaneum scrolls so far have been brand new texts. We've learned a lot, but they've mostly been of a single philosophical school called Epicureanism. And in fact, most of the scrolls have been written in the hands of a single man named Philodemus, who was a proponent of that philosophy. But this massive villa, which takes up almost half the size of the excavated town of Herculaneum, was likely owned by an exceedingly wealthy and well-connected man named Calpurnius Piso, who was the father-in-law of Julius Caesar. Now, would someone of this standing only have a library of a single philosophical school or the musings of a single philosopher? It seems unlikely. Potentially, on those lower two floors, there could be another intact ancient library that would have the classics, the most important works of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, not as known today, but as collected then, 2,000 years ago. Maybe it would contain lost plays, lost epics, lost historical treatises, lost political speeches. We don't know, but if those texts and those floors could be excavated, our understanding of the ancient world could be revolutionized to an extent not seen since the Renaissance. Now, the Italian government has a moratorium on all further excavations of Herculaneum. But if more excavations of the site could be done, and with all of those new technologies we have to be able to read these scrolls without damaging them, it's agonizing to think of all the knowledge that's hidden directly beneath me.